Hey, this is Clint Holly from Well Made Music. Uh, thanks for all the great responses on our past videos about turntables, cartridges, and how to select turntables and cartridges. Uh, so we're gonna keep diving into this topic. Uh, once you've decided on a turntable and maybe, you, or you wanna upgrade your cartridge to something else, a great question that we get all the time is, how do I set up my turntable to perform the way it should be with this new gear that I've just bought? So. I'm gonna use this uh, kind of consumer level techniques turntable uh, that has uh, some basic functions on it to allow you to set it up for good performance. And these are some things that you should look for when you're also looking to purchase a turntable. Uh, if you want something that's gonna last for a long time for you, something that you don't outgrow uh, quickly. So the, the couple things that are essential to have on your turntable uh, is the ability to change what we call the, the tracking weight or the tracking force, stylus force. Um, so that's this weight on the back of the turntable here. You can see it has a, a gradient on the back with some numbers, which we'll explain in a few minutes, and it has this big uh, round weight. The other um, adjustment that is necessary for good performance is what's called anti-skate. And anti-skate is a kind of a, a weird thing to internalize, but as the tone arm moves into the center of a record, the force of the stylus kind of shifts. And what this anti-skate does is it kind of adds some backwards force to the tone arm so it doesn't press just against one wall of the groove too heavily causing distortion and other issues as the stylus moves in towards the center of the turntable. So when you get your turntable, if it doesn't have a um, head shell on it, it'll look a lot like this. Um, it has this collar on it uh, that's currently empty. And also, hopefully, your tone arm is clamped down with this uh, clamp that most turntables have to uh, allow you to safely transport the turntable without hurting the, the tone arm. Um, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put the actual head shell. That's this piece. This is your cartridge. That's your stylus. This is your head shell. So the head shell is made to slide into this collar. And there's a little groove in the collar that this little tab on the head shell fits into. You put that in like that. And once it seats, you take the collar and you just lightly uh, tighten it down so there's no more uh, slop or back and forth movement in the head shell. And as you can see right now, it's, uh, it's pretty tight in there. So the first thing you wanna do is set what's called the uh, tracking force. Um, and what you need to do is the cartridge that you bought, if it came with documentation, it'll tell you the ideal tracking force uh, for that cartridge. And it usually gives it as a range, say somewhere between 1.5 and two grams. Um, and then you kind of use your ear and your best judgment as to what sounds the best within that range. And oftentimes they'll give you a number that's the ideal tracking force also. So. This cartridge here is a Denon DL110. I know that its uh, ideal range to operate in is somewhere between, I think 1.5 and two grams of, of downward uh, force. And there's a couple ways that you can do this. You can do it um, with uh, a scale that looks like this. And I'll show you how that works out in a second. Or the old school way manually by eye is to um, um, allow this weight turns like this. And so as you can see, as I move it in, the tone arm will drop down. As I move it out, the tone arm wants to go up. So what you want to do is you want to find a spot where the tone arm floats. And you can see right now that's not floating, but as I back this off, you can see the tone arm start to come up and we want to get it so it neither goes all the way up or all the way down. And you can see right now, it's not all the way up and it's not slamming down. So what you need to do then is this weight on the back has two pieces and this front measurement guide actually moves independently of the weight. You can see me turning it with my thumb right now. So when that tone arm floats, you set that to zero and then if the stylus force that you want to dial in is 1.7 grams, well, there's one gram, there's 1.5 grams, and then two lines beyond that, that's 1.7 grams of tracking force. Now, to double check that, or if you just want to use a scale like this, you can see I've turned it on, and we'll get it set to zero. 
So now it's reading zero. You can put the you can put that on your platter and then there's a little dot in the middle and you rest the stylus on that and we're at exactly 1.7 grams. So once you get really good at doing it by eye, the scale is a little unnecessary, but if you just want to use the scale, that's fine too. So now the tracking force has been set for what should be good for this particular cartridge. The next thing we want to do is we want to set what's called the anti-skate. And generally the anti-skate, they say whatever you set the downward tracking force to, to also set your uh, style, your anti-skate to that. So we're at 1.7 grams now. So we're going to set this to just under the number two. And you're going to be in the ballpark. Now there are records made like this record here. It has no grooves on it. It's just a flat, uh, it's just a flat record. And what should happen when the anti-skate is set correctly is we should be able to put the tone arm somewhere kind of in the middle of this record and it should stay in that spot it's not locking into any grooves because there are none on the record so it, it's free to glide back and forth so once i set this down you can see that the tone arm wants to kind of drift in a little bit and so and you can see as i change the anti-skate that moves and so you want that to just kind of float in one spot and we typically put this kind of like in the middle of the record. And as you can see right now, that's looking that's looking pretty good. And that is just at the number two on this. So a little out of line with that, the 1.7 there. But definitely if you're at 1.7, you're definitely in the ballpark. Um, those are the two main functions to set when you get a turntable, a brand new turntable that you've maybe upgraded to or you've selected uh, a turntable with these functions. Uh, I'll show you a couple other things real quickly too. A lot of turntables come with this light here off to the side. This is called a strobe. And what the strobe does is it allows you to uh, dial in the speed of the record, uh, the, the, the platter of the turntable. And now this was mostly important before quartz lock turntables came in in the mid 70s. You can see right now this bottom ball here is drifting a little bit and that should be stationary. It shouldn't move. And so I have this I have this little knob right here that I can make that adjustment. And as you can see, now that bottom ball is staying put. That means the speed is locked into 33 and a third RPM. Uh, United States, we have 60 Hertz power and we're at 33. So we want to look at the big, the big ball here on the bottom of the uh, platter. If we were running at 45, it would be this small one right here. Uh, like in this era of modern turntables, not as necessary, although a lot of uh, manufacturers still put a strobe on there because it looks kind of cool, but a lot of people don't know what it actually does. If you want to get into advanced setup of your turntable, you can also buy one of these pieces here. This is called a, um, it's a protractor and uh, it allows you to align your cartridge for the best possible performance on your turntable. Um, you put the, you put it on here and then you uh, have this little crosshair right here and you put the stylus kind of in the middle of that and you want the front edge of your cartridge to line up with these straight lines on the um on the protractor and you can check it at two different points out here near the edge and then closer into the middle and then you would adjust these screws on the top you would loosen that and you would actually tilt the cartridge a little bit left or right so it lines up uh, with these lines on the protractor. This is kind of a little bit more advanced, but hey, if you're into vinyl, it's definitely worth knowing. And these are the three things that are gonna ensure that you get the best performance out of your turntable.